I'm Tracy Walker. I'm a filmmaker. I'm Rachel Baskerville. I'm a photographer. And together we are producing a calendar. Join us as we take to the road to get to know 12 fabulous women and their old girls. This is Old Girls on the Road. Today we're visiting Nina, my daughter, my very pregnant daughter, and Ginny, her 1972 VW 1600 Superbug, which she's owned for eight years. Um, as you know, I have to tell you all that she's been diagnosed with breast cancer. So I've left it completely up to her if she wants to bring that up or not. This is Rachel. Lovely to meet you. Rachel, this is Ginny. Oh, Eating cherries goodness. and drinking whiskey. Oh, we don't have kids and there's no man listening. The pot's just right. We're on the boil tonight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thank you for letting us invade your tranquility out here and being a part of Old Girls on the Road. No worries. You've been in this beautiful home here now for three years. What have been the biggest challenges about moving so far away? <laughs> um, fencing? Did you say fencing? <laughs> yeah, goats. Fencing and the goats. The goats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, um, yeah, they've challenged us probably daily for the last two <laughs> years, really. Um, just escaping, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Incredible. And what prompted you to start rescuing animals? I guess the positive feelings that you get from knowing that you've given um, a being a happier life when it could have been really awful for them. Watching them flourish and grow That's and... It's very special. Kel, are you as enthusiastic about the rescue animals as Nina is? Yeah, I love them. Yeah. It's great. It's great seeing them become healthy and happy. You pretend you don't like it as much. You always whinge and groan. I've got to when I come of home, we have. yeah, when I come home with like a boot full of chickens, you're like, oh. but he secretly loves Here we it. Go again. Yeah. So, as a palliative care nurse, is that something that weighs quite heavily on you? I have definitely struggled with working as a palliative care nurse in the past. Probably about 18 months ago, I actually burnt out and had to take about three or four months off. So, I'm very aware of how much of an impact death and dying on, on the regular um, does affect me um, and most of the time it's really beautiful and peaceful and cathartic and it's actually really rewarding to be a part of um, that process with people. Getting back home and connecting with the animals is really what gets me through day to day or what got me through day to day. You want to just talk us through your, your feelings about ageing? Yeah, I just feel that we are so privileged to grow old, however old we manage to get to. You know, I look forward to the wrinkles and the sagging and all of that because some people don't get to experience that. It's a small and very superficial price to pay for all the things that you get to enjoy. Yeah, you know, some people might be might think, oh, it's easy for you to say you're sitting there 31 and you haven't got that many wrinkles or, you know, you're not that saggy at the moment. But um, I've actually just a fortnight ago have been diagnosed with breast cancer, so I'm experiencing ageing, I guess, a lot earlier than um, one would have expected to. And you know, with that comes the threat of early menopause and yeah, treatment forever yeah, and things like that. So, yeah. whilst also nurturing, you know, a life within me, which is another part of the ageing process. So, but it's Absolutely. all, yeah, I mean, you can only be grateful. You're not long off having your baby, your first baby. What are you looking forward to most about that? I just can't wait to hold it in my arms. I'm going to get a bit teary now. Because <laughs> um, you haven't found out whether it's a no, boy or a girl, it's a boy which or a girl. is a bit unusual these days. But, yeah. um, and what about you, Kel? What are you looking forward to the most? Yeah, just meeting it and watching it grow up. Yeah. And getting to know it. I've brought some pictures to show you. You don't, you won't remember this because that's you as a tiny oh. baby there. That's how you all slept in the back of the combi that's when we amazing. did our seven-hour trip yeah. out to 
St George. But you were the only one out of all the kids that would ever go for a ride on the motorbike with me. Yeah, it was heaps yeah. of fun. Scary, yeah. going around the corners. Yep, yep, yeah. good fun. Oh, I wish I had motorcycling memories with my mum. <laughs> <laughs> Your love of cars, you know, does it, does it stem from, from the interest that um, your dad and I had in old cars? It must have, yeah. because that's, what, that's all we grew up in was old cars and I remember growing up and being so embarrassed about them oh. and being so embarrassed about being dropped off to school in these old cars. Just wanting to get out of a shiny new yeah, car. Yeah and be normal I guess but um. I no. didn't know that. Oh, mortified. Go, that's see? why I got the train to school. I'm like I'm not going in the Cortina. Oh, Ew. Oh, no. <laughs> do you look back on these cars now and just still feel that same shame or do you look back not and go all. those were so beautiful I like, wish that I had have yeah. loved them at the time. Yeah. Definitely, or that mum had kept them, on. especially that um, the EK. Did you, yeah, oh, I love the EK. That was my favourite. We play a little game with these interviews. It's called Fast and Furious. I'm going to give you five questions. Which of these things do, would you say is more conducive to a positive ageing process? Mm -hmm. Moderate alcohol consumption or bottoms up? Bottoms up. <laughs> A challenge or a comfort? Challenge. 10 units of Botox or a puffteenth of attitude? A puffteenth of attitude. <laughs> a sea change or a tree change? Tree change, definitely. <laughs> and money or love? Love. Always love. And so you named your car Ginny. Where did you get the name from? Um, I'm a bit of a Harry Potter geek. Okay. So the full name is Ginny Weasley. And do you have a dream car or is your bug your dream? Um, I wouldn't mind trading it for a combi, okay. just because growing family, yeah. camping trips, not enough room. Or I do like the, um, the fastbacks, the V-dub fastbacks as well, but they're um, pretty rare, so. But definitely a V-dub girl. I think so, yeah, yeah. Did you ever think when you got this car that you'd be doing a photo shoot at eight months pregnant with it? <laughs> Definitely not. You look adorable. Thanks. I feel like I probably look a little bit like the bug. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Can we possibly get a chicken in there somehow? Yep. You're all right. You're famous. Lily Pilly. Tell us a little bit about one of your favourite memories in this car. Um, Kel and I went to a local music festival, which is just down the road, um, and it was a, a sleepover music festival, so we actually managed to both of us sleep in the back of this car. <laughs> Um, so that was the first amazing feat. Um, and then <laughs> the memories that I made the next day are not so good. Um, I actually got breathalyzed on the way out of the music festival and got done for drink driving. Um, I mean, I can laugh about it now, but at the time it was pretty devastating. I'd actually thought that I was being very responsible and I'd been counting my drinks and I'd actually been tallying them on a bit of paper so that I knew that I was okay to drive the next day, but I wasn't. You were off. Yeah, yeah. Well done, me. What do you love most about this car? I think the smell when you first get in it and start it up and the kids' reactions when you're driving along. Kids always think it's amazing. They point and laugh <laughs> and wave. And... Well, my beautiful girl, we've had a lovely day out here. Thanks for taking part. I know you've been under a lot of stress. All right, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you, darling. That was great. See you, Mama. Thanks for coming. It was lovely to meet you, Nina. You too.